Fury is Bobby Onlan's largest roller coaster. It's a Gerstlauer Infinity opened up in 2019. And right away, I gotta commend Bobby Onlan and Gerstlauer for the creativity of this ride. Because Fury does something that can only be found on this ride. To my knowledge, it doesn't exist anywhere else. This ride is known throughout the theme park industry because it features a voting system. When you board this roller coaster, your restraint has a forwards arrow and a backwards arrow, and you have to select whether you want the ride to go forwards or backwards. And depending on which the people vote for, when you roll out of the station, the turntable will either rotate so that you launch forwards initially, or you launch backwards. Now, because of how this ride experience is set up, you will go forwards and backwards no matter what during this ride experience. It's set up with a multi-pass launch at the start, so you'll go forwards and backwards up the spike, and then you go through the main course of the layout, either forwards or backwards, depending on what everyone voted for. So it's a very unique system, and it only works with this ride because of how this layout is set up. It's a great use of turntables, and I think it just adds some mystery for riders. It gets you excited every time you do it because you don't know what your ride experience is going to be. At least that is assuming you get in the line that is for voting. Fury does have a separate line just for if you want to experience the ride facing forwards, and I don't know how I feel about that. On one hand, I think it's nice that the ride offers that as an option for people who know that they don't want to go backwards but the thing is that this ride is going to go backwards no matter what but it's like okay the whole point of the randomization is that you don't know whether you're going to go forwards or backwards if you want to go forwards why then would you get in the random line when you could just get in the guaranteed forwards experience line so then it almost makes it where if you go in the random line everyone's more likely to vote for backwards so personally i think it's kind of weird that they have that option i feel like they should either have one line where no matter what it's the mystery feature or you also have a separate line for people that just want to go backwards and don't want the mystery. I don't know. It's an interesting situation. Maybe that's part of the reason why this only exists on this ride. But now that you understand the voting system, let's actually walk through this experience. So Fury has a very loose medieval theme. As you're entering the line, you'll see some cobblestone paths. In the station, there's helmets and axes and swords. I like this dragon statue in the queue. It has this really cool like spine-like design. When you board your train, you'll find three rows of four. So 12 passengers per train. The lap bar is the same setup as some other Infinity coasters if you've had the opportunity to experience like Hangtime and Knott's Berry Farm, Karnan at Hansa Park, Monster Adventureland. These all have the same lap bar setup. I know something I mentioned in the vlog, but if you're a dude, just be aware that at the bottom of the restraint in between your legs, there is a notch that if it presses down hard on you and, you know, everything's not quite in the right spot and it hits that, is painful. I speak from experience because on one of my rides that happened to me and it made it very difficult to enjoy the ride experience. So just make sure you're all situated and mind the notch. When you roll out of the station, at this point you should have voted whether you wanted to go forwards or backwards. You reach your first turntable and for this walkthrough of the ride experience, let's just assume that you're going forwards. You'll rotate to the right to line up with the launch track and you'll start accelerating towards your top pad. Of course, you won't be able to make it over. And I gotta emphasize that that first launch is a very mild acceleration. Like the whole point of it is just to get you going. The second launch going up that spike is very forceful. Whether you're experiencing it forwards or backwards, it is punchy. I also like how when you rise up into that, you definitely get some good floater airtime there. It's the spike that actually goes beyond vertical. There's one also at the end of the ride. That's what I was talking about when I say that no matter what, you're gonna go backwards. And then that is when you fall back down and hit your fastest launch. This is what I would assume is the top speed of 66 miles per hour. Then you rise up into your top hat. I'm assuming that this is the highest moment, which is listed on this ride at 141 feet. So it is pretty tall. And let me just say that this is probably the best single element on this ride. The airtime you get going over this top hat is awesome. I would say it's even crazier when you're going over backwards. Experiencing ejector airtime facing the other way is just absolutely wild. But from here, we go into the main meat of the layout. At the apex of the hill, you bank sharply down to the right. Maybe this is actually where you hit your top speed. It's tough to say. From here, you head into your first inversion. On RCDB, this is listed as a wraparound corkscrew. However, when I look at it, to me, it reminds me of a step up underflip that you'd find on an RMC. And frankly, I'd love if someone could explain why this is not a step up underflip, because to me, that's what it looks like. At the tallest point, you flip upside down, and then you take this bank back towards the bottom in the opposite direction. Maybe it's because it's not as compact, or maybe it's because step up underflips only exist on RMCs, and that's what makes it a thing. I have no idea. Honestly, so many of these elements, when I take a look at them, I'm like, I'm not even sure how to classify this. Like, you just get into a gray area. So nerdiness aside, at the bottom of this moment, you're actually on top 
top of the station building, which is pretty cool. You head up towards your next highest moment and like the top hat. When you're at your peak, you then bank swiftly downwards. This time is to the left and then you immediately enter your second and final inversion. Because of the way you take this element, it feels like a loop. But if you look at the angle it's at, it is not completely vertical, but it certainly feels that way when you're actually riding it. And that is when you enter your final launch section, which is now at the end of the ride. And I believe there's actually more used so as a braking system. I'm not even sure if it accelerates you, but if it does, it would be right as it catches right at this moment as you enter then your second scorpion tail. This one is at much more of a slant. So when you hit your peak, you're like actually hanging upside down. Then you roll back, pass through that section of straight track, go a little bit back up towards the element you just came from, roll forwards, and then you come to a stop. And that's when some drive tires catch you and then you rotate into the station, once again, facing forwards. And that's what ends your ride experience. If I could use one word to describe this roller coaster, it would be disorienting. And that is definitely the case if you select backwards. Actually, my first ride on Fury was facing backwards. I did not know the layout very well at all. And I had no idea what was going on. It was all over the place. I had no idea whether I was right side up, upside down. I didn't know what we were about to experience. And it was really cool. In retrospect, I think I would have appreciated the layout facing backwards more if I had done it forwards first. But there is something to be said about taking those different elements facing backwards for the first time when you are just so confused. It made for a very memorable ride experience. Now, even though this ride is a one of a kind, I could definitely draw some comparisons to some other Gerslauers that feature some similar feeling moments. The main one that I thought of was hang time at Knott's Berry Farm, especially this section right here when you're just diving down, coming back up, rolling over. Hang time features very similar sensations. So you could almost think of this ride as like a launched version of hang time. If there is a downside to this experience, it definitely has that Gerslauer rattle and shake to it. Even though this is not that old, as of when this video is being made, it's only been open for a few years. It's just a little strange when hang time is actually a year older and I thought that that was a smoother ride experience. So maybe it just comes down to the maintenance departments, how the ride is being taken care of, that sort of thing. But it wasn't that bad. Like it wasn't so bad that it took away from the ride experience, especially since this thing has lap bars and not over the shoulder restraints. It didn't detract from the experience as much as it could have. So in conclusion, Fury is a very unique roller coaster. It is one that I found to be fairly memorable because of the novelty of it. But I think if it didn't have that choose your ride experience feature, it would be nowhere near as cool cool. Like I would just look at this layout and say, oh yeah, it's just another Gerslauer, probably on the lower end of the infinity coasters. And I think when I look at all of the different infinity coasters that Gerslauer has built, this probably still is towards the bottom. Obviously there's still several I haven't experienced yet. I still need to get on Mystic, Gold Rush, Junker, Pit Special. But I think I still liked Hang Time and Monster more than this. And I think Karnan is still king as far as infinity coasters go. So I think for Fury's final score, I'm going to give it a seven out of 10. It is certainly cool. But to me, when I wrote it, it did not feel like that signature ride that Bobby on lawn needs. To me, it felt like a supporting roller coaster and not like the ride. I'm glad it features that forwards and backwards feature because I think without it, it would almost feel forgettable. Again, not that it like does anything wrong necessarily, but there's not a ton to it that like blows me away. I honestly think the thing that I like most about it is just that it is very creative. I like that it puts the choice in the hands of the riders and that like you actually have a say. If all you and your friends want to ride it backwards, if y'all vote for it, you'll probably go backwards. I think that's really neat. But regardless, I'm really glad that this ride is at this park. It's honestly kind of hard to imagine Bobby on Lawn without this roller coaster. Because while I think that park is still lacking that signature ride, I think without Fury, it would really be needing some help. But that's just my opinion on Fury at Bobby on Lawn. Let me know down in the comments below if you've had the opportunity to experience this ride. If you did it forwards and backwards, what you thought of the two different ride experiences. If you think there's anything I missed, something that's worth mentioning, be sure to post it down below. And of course, stay tuned for more coaster reviews from rides all across the world. There's still a ton more coming, so thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next time.